Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses, because he, the Lord Jesus, is Lord. And in him we live and we move and we have our being. And he is the reason for the season. (laughs) He's the reason for our existence. He's the reason that we're here and that we do the things that we do for this journey, for this time, for this season of what we call and consider life here on earth. And what is life here on earth? You know, what is this this window that we're here for? What is this uh, primary consciousness that we have and all the things that we experience? Because right now, one thing that we've been seeing in what we consider the the world around us is we've been seeing that things are changing. We see that things that we thought were once stable, <clears throat> once consistent, once constant are no longer consistent, are no longer constant, are no longer the rule. You know, the, the, Jesus talked about the house built on the sand, and when the, the floodwaters come, when the winds rise, that, that house falls apart because it's not built on the foundation, it's not built on the rock. And there's a lot of things, <clears throat> but the house that's built on the rock, it stands. Well, the rock is truth. The rock is ultimate truth. God is truth. He is the way, the, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said that about himself, and he is the physical manifestation of the spiritual reality of what is true, what is real, what is the actual reality of what is going on. And so, but the things that, that the world has, the things that the world has put forward, the things that the world has built itself upon <clears throat> are shifting sands, are uh, assumptions, are just um, things that they created as sort of rules of thumb for the time and sort of worked and served a purpose. But now, as time has gone forward, it's been seen to be found wanting. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in a new configuration. It doesn't work when things shift a little bit, when things change. Old orders don't work anymore. They change. And now, all of a sudden, the truth I can't is, is as truth comes in, the lies fall apart and the lies get exposed and the lies break apart. So, you know, in a simple way, you know, in some of our natural understanding, well, who's using 8-track cassettes anymore? Who's using, um, uh, you know, even CDs anymore? Well, when one more configuration, one more advancement comes forward, all that was before becomes obsolete, becomes irrelevant. Um, you know, one more shift, one more change. Now, this is just on a linear plane in a way that we can explain and sort of understand, but all the infrastructure of what once was becomes irrelevant. So as as things have continued to go forward now <clears throat> in so many different planes of dimension, as God is bringing forward His wave of light and truth, pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh, things that once were no longer are. And they cannot hold the place that they once did because the that which is moved forward um, makes that which once was irrelevant. So, um, you know, who are the celebrities of the day? Well, <laughs> you know, everybody's a celebrity today because everybody can be a voice out there. Everybody can be a, uh, a personality. Everybody can have a channel. <clears throat> everybody can um, publish and at the same time, all these people that once were, that were pillars of the establishment, that were the, the, the beacons that they would use to guide people to their own shipwreck, well, now they are just another thing that's out there. And, you know, and even the resource base that they used to garner from getting everybody's attention, that's being evaporated. Because wherever your consciousness is and wherever your attention is, that's what is given power. That's what's given um, sustenance. That's what grows. You know, one of the things that so many of the people that are in the, in really in any world, um, in any manifestation of anything that happens on this earth, it's a huge thing is about getting your attention. So, you know, can they get you to use their search engine? Can they get you to use their platform? Can they get you to onboard your friends onto a new social media, onto Why? Because where your attention is, that's what grows. And whatever doesn't have your attention, that's what dies. 
So, <clears throat> you know, the world is very concerned about what has your attention. The world is very concerned about what has your heart, what has your merit, what you believe, what you're aware of, what you perceive, what you put value on, and what you ultimately believe. Because in your belief is their access. And if you do not believe what they want you to believe, they don't have access. And the thing is, is what the world is offering is at limitation. The world, what it offers is based on a lie. It's not based on the truth. And so they need you to believe the lie in order to be able to access your, access you, access the life that's in you. But God is offering and shows the way of life. He shows the way of truth. He shows the way out. He shows the way that's real. But it involves a free will decision on our part. And the free will decision on our part is to, is to align ourselves with that which is true and to go with Him. Repentance is, is that realization that, hey, this was not right. And you turn and you change and you align yourself with that which is true for no matter how painful it might be, no matter how what you might lose <clears throat> in your thought process, whatever you think you might lose in this life is nothing compared to what you gain. You know, the, the rich young ruler struggled with that realization when he um, was asked to uh, when he was asked to, to give up and um, you know when he was asked to to, um, to give up and to let go <clears throat> in the process of doing that um, yeah he, he you know Jesus he first asked Jesus what do I lack and Jesus told him well you know here's the commandments he said I've done all these since I was a kid he said what else do I lack and he says well um you know, if you want to be perfect, go sell everything and then come follow me. Now, what was Jesus doing? Well, with that guy, he went one layer deeper. And when he went one layer deeper with him, you saw what was in him that kept him back. He saw for himself what was inside of himself that kept himself back. He saw what was his true Lord. And his true Lord, the thing that had a hold on him, the thing that he was holding on to the most was that which he had in the natural in this life. And it says in scriptures, it says that he went away sad. Now, well, why did he go away sad? Because he also knew that he had rejected life in exchange for, um, and he had rejected the journey that God had for him in exchange for what he thought he had in this life and in this world. Um, guarantee you if if he could make this decision again right now he would have chosen to follow Jesus from an eternal perspective absolutely he would have chosen not to miss that incredible opportunity that was right there in front of him the many are called but the chosen are few who will truly follow Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth and go where he will lead them do what he gives them to do and experience the abundant life or do they think that they know better <clears throat> do they think that in themselves that they know the best way. See, when, when we surrender to the Lordship of Christ Jesus, what we're surrendering to is, um, is, is His Word and His truth. So when Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly, we're also surrendering to the abundant life that He has for us. You know, th this, is, this is, again, some of the misteaching, some of the tremendous damage that's been done to the body of Christ by those that would sit in a place claiming to be authorities. You know, it is not uh, a properly and miserable existence that somebody signs up to when they follow Christ. It's a full life. It's a life full of purpose and meaning and understanding and, and, uh, and reason for being and reason for existing and, and, uh, and you know, you see the miracles of God around you all the time. It, it's, it is what everything in this, in this universe is, is wanting to see, which is the manifestations of the sons and the daughters of the living God. They want to see that. They want to see, and, and we want to come into that place. It's what your soul is actually groaning for. When somebody chooses to follow Christ, they're signing up for the real thing. But the world and that which has been around us has told us something completely opposite because the enemy has to put all of his focus into public relations, PR, 
you know, to get you to believe something contrary. So to get you to believe that good is bad and bad is good. To get you to believe that death is life and life is death. So there are, there are contradictions um, that are woven into this whole thing. Because the irony is, when you do follow Christ as well, yes, there is a form of death in that, in that you die to yourself. And now you live, the life you now live, you live in Christ Jesus. But the thing that you died from was absolute drudgery and the ultimate death of all that live in this world and all that are part of this world. <clears throat> you died to the slavery. You died to the bondage. You died to the illusion. You died to the game. And now you live in Christ Jesus. Now you live in what's real. Now you live in what's true. Now you live in the light. Isn't that a beautiful transition? And yet, what does the world tell you? It tries to make that transition be the thing they want to keep everybody away from. And <clears throat> what's the reason they want to keep everybody away from that? What's the reason that they want to um, limit people from that experience? What's the reason? Because there has to be a reason for it, right? There has to be, well, I mean, we, we went through a little bit with you guys on the Book of Enoch about the fall. You know, one of the realizations that you have in that is that those angels that fell, they knew and they tasted and they had been in the glory and the presence of the living God. And there is no coming back for them. So those that were in the eternal reality and that know that they'll never experience it again, <clears throat> that know that they've been pushed out and they will always experience limitation. And it'll go from their limitation of even right now to worse and worse and worse. And they see you made in the image and the likeness of the living God, Christ in you, the hope of glory, knowing that your, <clears throat> your ultimate destiny is to be in your glorified state, to be no longer a projection and a reflection and a shadow of who you are, but the true eternal manifestation of who you are. Of course, you know, you can realize, too, where they're coming from. Because if they can drain the life off from you, if they can take you to hell with them, if they can, and if they can do that, and in the process, now that's the only way they can try to get back at God, because you've been made in the image and the likeness of the living God, so what do they want to do? Well, they want to distort you. They want to make you something else. They want to say, oh, okay, you've been made in the image and the likeness of the living God, so let me screw this up as much as possible and say, okay, there you go. There's a reflection of God. They want to crush you. They want to break you. They want to, all of the things they want to try to do in order to do what? To try to get back at God. Now, they can't get to God because God is not gettable. So that's that is their that is their their revenge as such. And that is their attack, that is their push. And also because there's something of eternal value in you. Your spirit, your soul has eternal and incredible value and they want to keep that. They want to access that. They want to drain off of that. They want to siphon that. And because <clears throat> there's no life in them. See the world and the world system of what it is there is no life in the world. The only life that the world has is what it can drain and steal and siphon from that which is real. Because the world as a system has been cut off from that which is life. The world is a parasite. Um, you know, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, his song, he said, the world is a vampire. <laughs> so, I mean, Bob Marley said, the world is a vampire, Babylon, this va vampire system, Babylon system. It's, why, why do artists, you know, so often allude to this fact? You know, well, any art that ever has any merit, any art that has ever any resonance, has to have some semblance of truth in it. It has to have something of truth that rings that rings and resonates within the soul of another person. So, you know, so yeah. You know, those are those are it's it is. It's a it is a blood sucking, life sucking system. Scriptures in the book of Revelation, Babylon, mystery, mother of harlots, um, in you is the blood of all the saints and the prophets. Okay? 
all the, all the saints and all the prophets, everything that had life in it, everything that ever spoke truth, that blood that, has, that you have drunk, and what is the blood? Scriptures say the life is in the blood. That life that was in them is, was, was used and drained off and destroyed, and that's what they ran on. That's what they consumed. When you, <clears throat> when, when you, so that's what they consumed to build their thing to advance their their system to to push themselves forward to build the illusion to trap every soul that they possibly could see the emancipation of a soul from the illusion is the most dangerous thing for them because they lose that resource that eternal resource that would be used to power their 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 illusion if they <clears throat> If they lose that, they lose something of eternal and immeasurable value. So when Jesus, for example, was offered all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, well, what was it? What was that offer that was being made? It was to exchange that which was in him, which was eternal. He is eternal. He is truth. Exchange that for all of all of this, which is a lie, um, and a temporal, a real offer for a temporary time to bow his knee and to become part of that. And once that soul is captured and put into their system, you know, that's it. That's what they want. So they, the world will offer you everything that the world has up to that level because <clears throat> um, if it has you, then it just recycles you back into that system. So it doesn't really lose anything. You just get to get a, a window and a track to run around in for a window of time while you're here you get to enjoy a few things but ultimately that which is real and that which is in you has been been lost jesus said what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his very soul what do you what do you what can you give in exchange for your soul the the truth <clears throat> that you need to live in is the reality that there's nothing in this world to exchange for that's more valuable than your eternal soul that Christ Jesus died and paid for. And you don't have to give any, you owe nothing to this world when you have Christ because the debt has been paid. So there is no legal right to you. There's no spiritual right to you. There's, there, there's, and there's a way that's been made for you to even live in your time on the earth by Christ, and he's given that to us in his word, and you can walk that out. So that's, that's the, the transition, that's the change. But you don't have to be, you can, you can, so you can be like Jesus said to his disciples what his desire was for them. You can be in the world, but not of the world. You're here, but you're not of their system. You're in a different system. You're in a different kingdom. You're in the kingdom of light and truth. And you can walk through this life in that configuration. And you can be what God made you to be. And you don't have to be part of their thing. And the second that you will do that, then all hell breaks loose. Because now what? Well, first of all, they've lost a resource. Secondly, you're dangerous because you might wake up the person that was next to you. The wheat and the tare grow together, so if you are now wheat with life in you and there's something else that's right next to you that could be awakened and could be set free, that's dangerous. They need to silence that voice. They need to cut that voice off. They need to put that voice in the desert. They need to censor that voice on the internet. They need to <clears throat> break that link so nobody can hear it, nobody can see it, nobody can know it. Because if somebody hears it, knows it, understands, and that takes root in their heart and in their life, that person can be set free. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When you are consummated with the truth, the truth makes you free. So, how... So now what they need to do, how they do it, is they... They push to silence that voice. They push to keep that away that they, because you're a danger. You're a danger to their system. You're a danger to their... You're a danger to their system. And that possibility 
that you will wake somebody up, somebody else up, that you are leaving now and the damage that you can potentially do to their system by living out the truth. Because the revelation and the truth is that Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. So if you're moving and you're following Christ Jesus, your existence is going to destroy the works of the devil. The things you do will destroy the works of the devil. The things that you, the way that you live will destroy the works of the devil. So that reality is extremely dangerous for their system. Extremely dangerous for their for what they are trying to build and hold together. They're trying to hold together this house of cards, this <clears throat> sand castle on the seashore, and they're trying to push everything back and all the resources that they have. They're trying and here you come like a big bowling ball, you know, with the tide and smash everything all over the place. They can't have that. So they so what so understanding where the world is coming from and understanding why the world does what it does. Now they are made the way they're made and you my brother, you my sister of the living God, you are made the way that you're made. You were made to do the works of Christ Jesus. You were made to do greater works in Jesus name. But you've got to also understand who you are. You've got to remember who you are. You've got to have the configuration. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That needs to be there. So that you can also see through the illusion. See through the lie. It's got to click in your spirit. I pray in Jesus' name right now. It clicks in your spirit. And you reject the lie of the devil. And you move forward in the truth and the reality of who you are in Christ Jesus. Why does the devil invest so much in trying to get you to believe you're something else? Because you've got to create it. It's got to push to get you to believe that you're something else so that you will create that false reality. So that you will be the one that speaks into your own life the destruction and the damage that they want you to do. So they want you to say you're you're something less than what you are. They want to put, so they put it into your head. They attack you with those thoughts. They put those things in front of you. They get you chasing, chasing the bouncing ball. All of those things are deliberate and purposeful. Why? Because if you spent a little bit of time before the Father, if you got quiet, if you prayed, if you read your word, and you let those things seep into your spirit, you would recognize that it would resonate within the core of your being that you are a child of the living God, that you are a co-heir in Christ Jesus, that you are destined for all eternity, that, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and you have been bought and paid for by the living God, and this is your Father, and everywhere that you set your feet, that that is ground that's been given to, to God's people. The world is, are the usurpers. The world system is the usurpers. They're the parasites. Not you. You're what's right. They are the aberration. They are the abomination. They are what's been twisted and turned and made into something that is contrary, something that is not real. You are the one that is aligned with reality. You know, one level you got to give you got to give them credit where credit's due. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. They didn't have a single resource. The world system didn't have any resource in and of itself, but it found a way to usurp the resources from the children and the people of the living God to twist and turn it upside down and to make that which was the heir, those that were the co-heirs in Christ, to make them the slaves and the bond servants of a system and to build their own prison. Look at what happened all the way back to the garden. I mean, hey, you know, there is... <clears throat> there is Smarts. The world system's got smarts, okay? They've got knowledge. They've got information. They've got um, psychic computers, as Bishop Conco would have said. 
you know, in the classic interview, you guys should go listen to those, um, you know, fourth generation witch doctors saved by the Lord Jesus Christ exposes uh, so many things from that side because God wanted him to, to tell exactly how and why and what they do. And you need, you need testimonies like that to also understand some things. Okay, go listen to that one. It's out there. Uh, it should be still in the Faith Mix uh, inside some of the old archives as well. You can probably download the audios there and listen to those ones, uh, interviews that were done with Zeph. Okay. Um, Brother Zeph Daniel, God bless you, my friend. Bless you, Trish. Um, <clears throat> so, why? You know, they, they've, they've, they've done this. The world system has done this. All the way back to the garden, they got people. Um, they Here's Adam, created for, and just, I mean, made in the image and the likeness of God. Dominion over all things. Beautiful situation. Twisted and turned all of that in the fall. The enemy set him up. Fell for it. But Christ Jesus turned it, flipped the script. It's, it's beautiful what God has done. But what the enemy wants to do is to tell you, is to not let you know and not allow you to move in the reality of what's actually true. See, what we're, what we're talking about here is switching over to the reality of what's actually true. If you move in what's, what's true, if you move in the reality of what's actually real, you will experience truth. You will experience that which is real. You will experience the reality of who you are. Because it's right there for you. Jesus has already put it in His Word. It's, it, in His Word, it's right there for you. You have an inheritance in Christ. It's right there for you. You know, I, 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 I remember some of those. Uh, you know, I, I remember some of those old church stories. You know that you'd hear, and there was one that I, I, I heard a long time ago. I remember this one where it's the story of this guy that had, he he had saved up everything he could to get on this this ship that would take him to a new country. And um, and he was he just bought enough he got enough money together for this ticket, and um, you know he he put whatever food he could together inside of inside of a bag for this journey, and and he got on this this trip. And as the as the ship went, and you know he he had his food that he had, and he was working his way through and rationing things out, and he would look into in the night he would see these dining cars and and. People would be inside there eating and, and seemingly feasting and having this great time. And and he would just be out there and just be, you know, just trying to just slowly but surely, you know, just make his way for this journey. And then he, towards the end, he, he just ran out of food and he was just hungry. And, um, and as they got close to arriving and they were almost at their destination and he just got so sick and so ill um, and... And people were asking him, you know, what what's going on? And he just he was like, you know, just I've ran out of food and I'm hungry. And and uh, and he said, all I could afford was his ticket. And he said, well, why have you not been eating? And he says, well, because. And they said, well, don't you know that in your ticket, in the price of your ticket, you also all this food that's here is available for you all the time. It's part of your it's part of your fare. It's part of the price that you paid. It's the prior part of the price that was paid to come here. Barely made it to the destination. You know, I think that's, you know, it's, it's a story that I'm reminded of right now. Because how many, how many of God's children do not move in the full measure and the full rights that they have as children of God in their journey of this life on the earth? God's made so many things available to you besides just... Uh, just the, the 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 debt being paid for us to now be able to come before the living God. 
But if you and I don't move in the other elements of the reality of truth of who we are, well, okay, then, you know, you're going to watch with your sack lunch and try to ration it for the rest of the journey. You're living as a pauper when God has made you a prince and a princess. When God has given you provision for the journey, when God has given you instruction, when he's given you purpose, but you don't know. You know, so often it is just because we don't know and we don't apply what we know. See, one one piece is we don't know. The other part is that we don't apply what we know. So, for example, somebody can know everything about how to potentially... um, Okay, I, I mean, this may be a sensitive topic for some people, and this is, but just say if you want to to uh, to cut a little bit of weight. Well, you, you you know, some people don't know what they need to do. Some people know, and they just don't do it. But when you apply what you know, you'll see the result. You'll see the benefit. You'll see the impact in your life. Now, let's move that forward to the, to to that which is truth and our reality and what's real well when you apply what is true when you apply what is real when you apply the the principles that god's given us to the reality and our manifestations here on earth okay now you'll see that result now you'll see the sick healed the dead raised, the demons cast out, the lepers cleansed. Now you'll see the demons themselves petrified because you know who you are. Those seven sons of Sceva that tried to do what they saw Paul doing, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches when they tried to use a method, what did the demons say one day? Because they let him probably run this little thing for a little bit. Then they called him on it. The demon spoke back to them. What did he say? Jesus I know, and I know, I know about Paul, but who are you? See, there was a misalignment. and they, they, they ended up getting beaten so badly, they're all running out of the house naked. I mean, God, what a sight. Seven... Seven guys getting beaten up by one demon-possessed guy running out of the house naked and bleeding. I mean, wow. (laughs) Just, you know, I mean, talk about the inversion of what's supposed to be the way that you're supposed to live. For us, the child of God, one will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. On the flip side, in their world, you know, one of their demon-possessed people can thrash completely is seven. Seven's a number of completion. Well, okay, seven. <laughs> seven, seven worlders in a second. You know, they, there's no strength in them when they try to do... You can't do this without Christ. You have no power in yourself to do this without Christ. But in Him, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. But, you know, yeah... You know, that once you know the power that, that is there and who you are, the devils and the demons will flee. They will run because they have to give way. <clears throat> so, for example, when we all get together, when we pray on 20 on 20, why is the entire world shifting? You've got, you, might, if you, you may not remember when the whole thing started, when God quickened everybody to begin it was because it was all his time this has all been a god thing anybody that's been close to this at all knows this is a god thing his timing his way his will his instruction his plan his purpose you get in line with him you get in correctional correct position with him and you can flow with him christ jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith he's the beginning and the end so in him you need to flow so you get into that spiritual position where you are in the right step right link right connection and you can flow with him well okay in that flow this is what's going on in that flow 
the entire world has been shifting. Now we, we who are we? You know, like when, when Paul was, was writing to the church, he said, who is, who is Paul? Who is Peter? Who is Apollos? You know, who, who are, you know, we're just people by which you've heard the message. It's Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. All we are is people that have responded to the call and done what God has given us to do. But he's the one that's doing the work. But we get to enjoy being on that ride with him. And we get to enjoy the abundant life in Christ by being in link and connection with him. The mysteries of Christ being revealed. I tell you, there is something so amazing when God starts to show you something. I don't know about, well, I, I just know for myself that God, the things that God will show, it's just mind-blowing. And it's just, it's just a little piece of so much more. The world has nothing like that. The world has nothing like that. Uh, the, the kind of things that God has just shown me with and through his people and through his revelation and through the way that he works and bringing it all together, I tell you, I, I've, I've <clears throat> listened to some of the top minds in the world that the world has to offer and they have nothing compared to what it is that God is putting out there for his people right now. The revelations of Christ are are beyond anything this world has to offer. It's right there for every child of the living God. It's right there for us. It's right there for you. And if you if you have a limitation in your experience, go before God and ask Him. And let Him show you how to shift and how to change and how to move so that you can experience and be what God destined and intended for you to be for your entire journey. This is your journey. And it's right now. So avoid this thing about tomorrow because there this is your this it's right now. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ is I am. Right now is where and when you decide how now you live. Now is the time that you make your choice, not later, now. This is the moment that you can live in abundant life, not later, now. I am excited for God's people. I'm excited for the reality of what's true. I'm excited to just, I mean, you know what, all the... All of the witchcraft and all of the attacks of the devil and all those things, I tell you, you, you just switch one one step moving into just one other just change and all of a sudden it's just like so many of those things just they just fall apart. There's there's but this is the work of God, all right? This is the work of God, and God will and sometimes have us to experience all these different things. But you gotta know you've got the greater one is in you than he that's greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greater is the authority that you have in Christ Jesus than anything that the world has. Because Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. <clears throat> he's the Lord of Lords. It means he's above all of them. He's above all of their systems. He's above all of the uh, he's above it all. Everything bows to his lordship. Nature bows to his lordship. Everything in this world, in this paradigm, all of it bows to his lordship. When God decided, he just said, okay, you know what, I'm going to stop the sun in the sky for a day. Pretty much a day for Joshua in the battle. Done. Can you imagine that? The sun doesn't go down. It just stays there for an extra day just so that you can keep fighting and destroy the enemies of the living God. The things that God will do for His people when His people will trust Him and take a step with Him. The things that God will do for you, through you, in you, with you, if you will but trust Him. 
you got to take that step and see that He's there. It's a lot of people that will never take that first step because they want to know the will of God so that they can consider it, not so that they can actually do it. And you can spend your entire existence and your entire time in this paradigm considering, 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 pondering, wondering. And somebody else will come alongside right next to you. They'll hear it once and they'll do And that person will experience and know the life and the truth and the reality and the abundant life while somebody else just watched from the side the whole time, considering, pondering, weighing. This is not a spectator sport, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is a reality. This is a truth. This is a way to live. This is a way to be. God intended for you to live the truth, know the truth the truth to make you free, to walk in that truth and to be what He made you to be. There's an incredible fullness of His plan and purpose for you, but it won't come any other way. You've got to go with Him. He's Lord, not you. He's the way, not you. He's the truth, not you. He's the life, not you. But when you're consummated with Him, now you and the Father are one. In Him, in Christ Jesus. You're one in Him. You are now truly an ambassador of the truth. And you are now truly a representative of Christ on the earth at such a time as this. So, yeah. No, it's it's an incredible, incredible, incredible thing. And what God has for His people right now is, it's amazing. You want to walk in that. You want to know that. You want to live in that. There's a destiny that God intends for His people right now. And He wants you to walk that out. So, oh man. So yeah, no, it's just, I'm excited. I'm excited for all of us. I'm excited for what God is doing right now. And, um, you know, just... It's already done. You've already won. You've already won in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord, I just pray for each and every brother and sister in Christ. I pray that you bless them, keep them, protect them, strengthen them, lift them up in their hearts and their spirits. Anybody that's sick in their body right now, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you guys. Keep on keeping on, and we will talk to you again sometime very, very, very soon. All right. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.